All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, we praise Him, we seek His aid, and we seek His guidance. We seek refuge in Allah from the evil within ourselves and from the evil within our sins. Those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided them can misguide, and those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has led astray them can guide. And I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad وسلم, is his servant and messenger. My dear respected brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about a disease in the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of something that we should have our attention to this so that we can protect ourselves from that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bringing to life. And this isn't a disease that I have given you that I have to do this disease, but Allah is explicitly telling the Quran, fear or no fear of God. And then the heart is a disease, and because they didn't, they didn't see the sun, because they didn't make their tongue, only increase the disease. But before we get into this disease, I want to talk about a situation at the time of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam was preparing for the battle of Tabuk. And he was running around telling the Sahaba, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. And every Sahaba he went to, for the most part, pretty much told him, Ya Rasulullah, we are getting ready. He came to a companion by the name of Ka'b ibn Malik. And he used to tell Ka'b ibn Malik, have you prepared yourself for the battle of Tabuk? And Ka'b ibn Malik would tell the Prophet, just take care of it tomorrow, Ya Rasulullah. Everybody else, I'll just take care of it tomorrow. I have the time. He would just continually, continuously procrastinate the situation. The following day, the Prophet will come to him again. Hey, James, have, you, have you prepared yourself, Ya Ka'ab? He said, Ya Rasulullah, I'm going to take care of it tomorrow. I'm going to take care of it tomorrow. He saw the Prophet each and every single day. The Prophet reminded him each and every single day. But he didn't adhere to what the Prophet was asking him to do. And Ka'b ibn Malik narrates this hadith himself, and you find in Bukhari and Muslim, he goes on by saying, I have never been more ready to aid the Prophet I didn't have an excuse. I had money, I had help, the situation was good. There was no reason as to why I did not get up and do what I had 
to do for the profit of the them. It was strictly out of laziness and procrastination, period. Now, God did it, they woke up one morning, and he found that the prophet Ali Salatu Wasalam had taken up along with the army. And as he was looking around the city of Medina, he found himself amongst the hypocrites, amongst the non hypocrites, the Munafiqul. Now, Kaab ibn Mali quickly realized he messed up. As soon as he realized he messed up, he began to try to come up with some sort of lie, some sort of excuse to give to the Prophet as to why he did not protect himself. And as he was walking up on the streets of Medina, the Munafi Bull was saying, Why did this Prophet, why did this Prophet take us up to Medina? He quickly got dressed and went to the masjid because there was a new son of the Prophet. Anytime he made it from any expedition or some sort of travel, he will go straight to the masjid and pray his Torah class. Now, when Kaab ibn Nadi got to the masjid, he saw a long line outside of the masjid, people waiting just to give their excuses to the Prophet. And these were all hypocrites in Medina. These were people just coming up with lies and big excuses. And God would be able to say, each one who would go to the Prophet, Ali Sassadah, give their excuse and the Prophet would be like, you can, Ali Sassadah, you can just go, just go. You he, he knows what the heart is. He knows what the heart is. He's not going to entertain the people with them. He knows where they stand. They've made it very clear. Now, God in the middle, he walks in to see the Prophet, Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he sits in front of the Prophet, Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And before we can, before we can say the excuse that he's prepared, he looks at the Prophet, Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he says, Yes, so now, my Allah prepared an eloquent, you know, an eloquent excuse. Prepared an eloquent excuse. When I saw your face, Ya Rasulullah, I couldn't do that to Ya Rasulullah, Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Ali Sallallahu pointed at this individual Prophet Nimani and he said out loud in the masjid for even the hypocrites to hear, and As for this individual, he's told the truth. Meaning I acknowledge all, all of what you told me was a lie. It's not a on a single word. Now Prophet Nimani, as soon as he heard this, I began to cry. And the Prophet Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had ordered the Sahaba of Medina to boycott Ka'ab ibn Nimr for, uh, for 50 days. Now, as he looked up the masjid, Ka'ab ibn Nimr had turned to some of the Sahaba. He said, Is there anybody else in my situation? And they said, There are two people, which are not mentioned in the hadith, but are from the tribes of Medina. There are two individuals. Same situation as you. They were ready, but all the, the reason was procrastination. Now, some people may think it's extreme that the Prophet ﷺ would isolate and boycott Ka'ab ibn Malik, but one thing you have to realize is that the Prophet ﷺ saw the symptoms of the effect within Ka'ab ibn Malik, and as a result of this, told him to isolate, reflect, and correct himself. And it's something we all need to do. Speak for myself first and foremost. This is which you cannot go to some doctor and he will give you some sort of cat scan or cat scan or actually this is solely on you to sit down, reflect, and ask yourself the question, do I have these symptoms? Now now and he goes to his 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 cousin on the 40th day. And he says, Don't you know? That I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet. 
Like, I love them, right? And his cousin told him, bring strength out, Allah and Rasulullah wa ta'ala. The Prophet, excuse me, Allah, and the Prophet said, the best. Speech is easy. It's very easy to say you believe. But when it comes to the actions, where do you stand? And that's why I believe that this is something very, very powerful. It's like we let go. The hypocrite gets a kind of to do what he doesn't do a lot. He speaks a lot, but he doesn't do a lot. He speaks a lot, but doesn't do much. Now, God of the Lord, on, on Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, before he was also ordered to, 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 to separate from his wife. The Prophet, he got very vulnerable, and he sent the message to the Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, so I divorced my Mrs. Mill, just separate and keep making your trouble, make sure you correct yourself. I'm scared because you're an example for your wife. I don't want her to attain the same symptoms or the same characteristics which you've had when it comes to this disease. On the 50th day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in the Quran Partake in this war, this is simply because of their procrastination and laziness. As a result of that, he went to his house, he gave him the news, Allah has forgiven you. He wants to Allah, he gives him some clothes and something, and he quickly runs to the masjid to see the Prophet. He hasn't seen him in 15 minutes. Imagine being within the vicinity of the Prophet, but you can't go say nothing to him. Just think about that position. So if it's a tough position to be in, not to be that the Muslims are doing, but the Muslims are conducting this. So you, it's a very difficult time for God. So when this, when this sign of forgiveness comes, he becomes extremely excited. He's got his community back. But my dear respected brothers and sisters, one of the symptoms of this disease, which caused the Prophet to ask the and the three others to isolate. Before it's not something that you can go and do before, it's not something you can, 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 can maybe come to you, but this often takes for you to sit back, reflect, and ask yourself the question when you stand amongst these things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not say this to yourself amongst the, the symptoms of this disease. He goes, Yeah, I'm not going to do all you need. Why don't you do the same? Why don't you do the things you say? It is hated. It's not just like it is hated. You say you're going to do something you don't do. You know, the king is watching you. He did. He did uphold it. He procrastinated. And as a result of that, he had a symptom. The boss had cared about him so much, he told him to reform and seek Toba. This one symptom, I want you to think about that for a moment. And the scholars of Tafsir, you open any book of Tafsir, you know, when it comes to these ayahs, they say that even this ayah revokes to the people, us Muslims, who have given the oath to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, have you what you said you're going to do? Or do you just pick and choose from the deen what you want to follow and what is convenient, what, it, what just fits your agenda for the sake of fitting in with everybody? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What it would just fit your agenda for the sake of fitting in with everybody? And it's a question I ask myself each and every single day, and each and every single one of us here has to ask ourselves this question. Are we upholding the rights of Allah on us? We have said, are we praying? Are we giving us a care? Are we doing everything we need to do that comes towards Allah? Or are we just picking and choosing? Don't say that you're lacking or just to fill your agenda that this is halal and this is haram. This was for the time of the prophecy. It doesn't come to me. And you not to to the community. Allah tells us very clearly that Allah gets perfected our religion. He doesn't need your opinion. I promise you. Allah doesn't need your union alone, period. 
the Prophet sign for us as well too. When the hypocrites used to come to the Prophet, they used to declare to the Prophet, We declare, we know. And subhanAllah, you can come to the Prophet, we declare. It's easy when you're in the middle of the crowd, when everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing, to testify and do what you're supposed to do. What do your actions look like when no one's watching? Right? The Bible tells us that it doesn't stop there. He goes on by saying, "And talk about him turning the tables for some reason." He said, "Yeah, the part of the talk of the individuals this morning, this hypocrite, who have taken their iman as a clothing, as a dress, just to fit in, just to sound good, just for the sake, just for the sake of being a part of a community. It means nothing. They said they don't. They don't know what they are doing." It means nothing. Their deed is simply for the sake of name, fame, and material gain. There's no sincerity when it comes to Allah. They're the same individuals when you go to the store. If you were just to come, this was a Seek forgiveness from Allah. A hypocrite thinks he's got it all figured out. A hypocrite thinks he's a Muslim, he's good because he's a good person, he doesn't need to pray, or if he prays, it's with everybody. And there's no sincerity. There is no sincerity to such an extent that even when it comes to this blessing of being able to make talka, they don't take advantage of it because they think they're good. We're good. We don't need to make tawbah. We're Muslim. We don't understand where from the We understand the dunya we live in, and that's how we move. Doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't stop there. At the time of the Prophet, وسلم, a hypocrite. At the time of the Prophet, Salaam, and this same characteristic applies to the hypocrites of today. Don't spend on the Muslims, don't spend on the mission. With the mission has a lot of money, the, the, the community. There's no unity. A, a hypocrite is just constantly just a part of the way when he wants to be. A part of the way when he wants to be. There's no unity. Not, they don't establish a report or put anything towards establishing something for the sake of Allah. But let me just stop there. If you go to the Messiah, it finishes all the symptoms. He goes to the Messiah, and then what have you been in your heart? The hypocrites are trying to deceive Allah. Think because they've deceived the people, they've been able to think and not to call them out and be betrayed. They think because they've deceived the people, they think they can deceive Allah. They deal with laziness. They deal because everybody's getting up for salam. When they get up for fajr, it's the last two to three minutes you've been making your wudu, quick salam, and the time of shooting comes in. It's you barely mention your salah. There's no symptoms of what happened. It's not that also he's lazy for salah. It's that he doesn't prioritize it in such a way that when it's time for salah, it's time for salah. I'm not going to save it for the last two to three minutes of, of when it's going to expire. When they get up for salah, it's lazy. There's no excitement. They don't realize they're about to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't realize the Lord's giving them that opportunity. There's no excitement. There's no. There's there's no that want of seeking of the reward even for salah. You want that mess. A hypocrite is constantly observing the people, constantly looking for the faults of people, constantly looking for the 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 Everybody is the solution for everything. But when it comes to himself, when it comes to himself, there's no correction. If I could please ask the brothers to move forward, inshallah.
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on by saying, وَلَا يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا This same hypocrite who's constantly calling out the people, who's constantly looking for the faults of the people, who doesn't even, well, if he does get up for salah, it's within laziness. If this same individual, وَلَا يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا They don't remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except but a little bit themselves. And Allah tells us the situation without the being of a hypocrite is constantly swaying between what is right and what is wrong. It just not fix his agenda. It should, there's no, there's no istiqamah, there's no steadfastness on what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed him with. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't stop there. What is the final outcome of this disease? Now I want you to think about this for a moment. When Abdullah ibn Ubay bin Sulul passed away, his son came to the Prophet ﷺ. Abdullah bin Ubay bin Surur was the leader of the Munafiqs in Medina. His son, who accepted Islam, came to the Prophet ﷺ and he said, Ya Rasulullah, my father has passed away. No one wants to pray his jinnahs. Everybody knew who he was the name for. Everybody knew who he was. He said, my father passed away. You know who he was. No one wants to pray on him. Not only that, no one wants to give their garments for the sake of justice. No one can help me just give him some sort of cover to wrap him up. The Prophet said, I took his garment off, said, We'll wrap him in this, and I'll pray this. Jannah. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed that at that moment. I want you to think about this for a moment. Allah told the Prophet, Whether you choose to seek forgiveness for this individual or for you. Even if you were to seek forgiveness for this individual 70 times, no, I'm not going to forgive him. And it's very simple. They disbelieved in Allah. Allah knows what's in your heart. Allah knows what you really put in your heart. It's very easy when you're from the place to set up, put on a smile, put on a dog. MashaAllah, you say, it's easy when you're in front of everybody who promise you. But when you're alone, when it's just you and Allah, it's just you and your partner, Allah, and you're looking at you, what is your name? What is your status? What is your heart like at that moment? You can't And if you do, how do you identify yourself? And the last three symptoms I'll leave you with the Prophet Ali Salatu Wasalam said, I have to move out to the Said the signs of a hypocrite are three. Either hadith or kidnap, but when he speaks, he lies. Right? He says, Sometimes you can look across his individuals with constant lies out of their mouth. There's no substance to their kalam, to their words. But even Allah, when he promises you something, he breaks that promise. I, I, I promise you, I got you, I'm going to be here. All of a sudden, you, you flake or you dim out and you don't show up. When he got two in the heart, and the final thing the Prophet said, when he's entrusted with some sort of advice, when a brother gives you some, something he's entrusting you with, you break that trust by going and telling everybody. You see, a hypocrite is not looking for peace, they are looking for fitness. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that for every disease, there is a cure. For every disease, there is a cure. And as I mentioned before, this particular disease, it's on you. It's on you to sit down, just like Umar radiallahu anhu used to say, Hasibu qabla anta hasibu. Hold yourself accountable before you go meet Allah, and He will hold you accountable. It's on you to sit down, reflect over your, the way you conduct yourself, the way you carry yourself, and ask yourself, am I showing these symptoms? And if I'm showing these symptoms, have I made my tawbah, and have I done what I needed to do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, illa man tab, except Allah loves to give us hope. And this is the beautiful thing about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is Rahman rahim he loves to give us hope. Illa man tab, wa amin, wa aslah, except for that individual who not only turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, makes his tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
but they believed in Allah because of Su'ayb. The hypocrite will constantly sway back and forth. Allah says that the, the cure for this disease is that you make your tawbah, you seek forgiveness. It's not just, you know, Allah, please forgive me, and you run back to what you're doing. You seek your forgiveness, you properly believe in Allah. This is going to take for you to make effort. And above all, the Muslims are not going to be able to do that. And they could themselves for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not for the sake of name, fame, or team, okay? Not because the community is watching. Not because I'm with this brother or that brother. They've corrected their deen in their heart and their situation strictly for Allah. Allah tells us, They'll be amongst the true believers. And he will bless the true believers with a very great reward. My dear respected brothers and sisters, this is the disease, and I'll leave you all with this, and I'll reiterate this again. You cannot go get a PET scan, CAT scan, or some sort of doctor to identify this within your heart. This takes on you to sit down, go over the symptoms, and if you find any of these symptoms within your heart, seek your forgiveness from Allah and try your best when it comes to these affairs. Ibadullah, inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi, ya ayu al nadina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallim wa taslima, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad. ما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وبارك اللهم على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم اجعلنا من التوابين اللهم اجعلنا من المتطهرين اللهم اجعلنا من الذين يستمعون القول فيتبعون احسنه رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه ربنا لا تؤاخذنا ان نسينا واخطانا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا اسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقه لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا انت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله في على الصلاة في على الفلا قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الفلا الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استوى استقيم استقيم لا نسير صدر صدر تغيرون دلائل تون لي بيابين بيبين الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين والتين والزيتون وطور سينين وهذا البلد الأمين لقد خلقنا الإنسان في أحسن تقويم ثم رددناه أسفل سافلين إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات فلهم أجر غير من فما يكذبك بعد بالدين أليس الله بأحكم الحاكمين الله
سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين لإلاف قريش إلافهم رحلة الشتاء والصيف فليعبدوا رب هذا البيت الذي أطعمهم وآمنهم وآمنهم من خوف الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله so uh, next Saturday we have a community podlet. Um, it's open to all families in their community. Uh, please register online. Uh, you can see the link on the WhatsApp messages and registration is until December 8th. So it's next Thursday and it's on uh, Saturday between after right after the uh, 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 Okay. 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 Okay.